Welcome everybody to another video. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to create a lower thirds effect so that you can put, as you can see here, a logo over your camera feed in a Zoom call or a Teams call so that you can up your marketing game, your recruiting game, your personal branding game, whatever game it is you are playing in those calls. So it is free to do and I'll be showing you how to do it, so stick around. So hey, I'm Dr. Craig Ingstrom, but you can just call me Craig because I work at a very friendly place where we're on a first name basis with most folks. And that place is Southern Illinois University Carbondale, where I teach business communication, persuasion, and public speaking. And as you can see, we are the home of the Saluki. So if you want to be able to put some kind of a logo over your video feed, you will use a software called Open Broadcasting Software. And the good news is I have a step-by-step -step tutorial that you can download from my website so that you don't have to just keep watching the video and going back and forth. You can print it out, look at it, and kind of I'll walk you through every step. But I will show you today how to do it in this video tutorial. Now, there are actually two ways to get this effect. I'm gonna show you the first one. It is not free, but I think for those of you that are in the teaching community that watch my videos, you might be interested in this. You might also be interested in if you do a lot of sort of like events. I could see this being a very valuable tool if you are, let's say, in a music program and you want to be able to have concerts with multiple angles and so forth. So what you would use in this case is a switcher. I'm gonna go ahead and go over to camera two here and you can see I'm using it as a dock cam. So this is my switcher, it's an Atem Mini Pro. And uh, the nice thing is you can have multiple cameras. So you can see here, camera one, camera two, camera three and four. And, and these can be things like a device. I can actually hook up another computer and sometimes I'll do this and just have my PowerPoint slides there. It allows me to switch back and forth. Uh, so lots of options there. Now, another great thing is you can do the video overlay by clicking the on key or the off key. And there is a software for this that's pretty simple to use and you can have you know as many images effects all kinds of things I can fade to black if I want to okay I'm gonna switch back over to camera one here and now I'm going to just hit the on key for that logo so that is actually one of the best ways to do it but if you don't want to spend any money the good news is you can use OBS so let's jump on the PC and I will show you how to get it what you need to do and again on my website a downloadable document because sometimes just having that handout is easier to kind of walk you through the steps. Okay, so here we are on my PC screen. What you'll want to do is go over to obsproject.com and then download it for Windows, Mac, or Linux. And the latest release is super cool because it comes with the virtual camera and before it did not. So I would just recommend if you already have OBS on your device, delete it and re-download or make sure that you know how to get the plugin. I'll put a link to a video that teaches you how to do plugins. So anyway, all you're going to do though is download. If you're, this is your first time ever using this, you'll just click on it, it'll download. I'm not gonna go through the process of downloading because I assume you know how to download and install software. Once it is installed, you will have some kind of a shortcut. It'll probably be on your desktop. I moved it into this folder for this video. If you don't find it, of course, you can just type in OBS and choose it from the Windows key. Of course, if you're using a Mac, it'll look a little different. Once you have that, you just double click and open it. Once it's opened, if it's your first time opening it, it will actually go through a series of steps. In the downloadable document, I actually have the process for you. So I took screenshots along the way. Once it's open, uh, you might have, depending on what your setup is, a different size of canvas. I do want to highlight this because one thing that might come up is if you have a device that is not 16 by nine, in other words, it is something like a two by three, which is actually what mine is. Uh, what that means is my, computer screen is just a different dimension than say a typical HD. The first thing you'll want to do is to go to file, go to settings. You'll want to click on video and then right here on the base canvas and so forth and the output you want to change to 1920 by 180 or 16 by 9 ratio. Once you have that, click apply, and you'll see that it actually changes the canvas to the dimension that you're probably more familiar with. Once you have that set up, it's super easy. You basically are just going to really need to do four to five things. The first thing is, is to recognize that you need to set up a scene. Now there will be a scene already available for you. You could rename it if you want to by right clicking 
and then going up to rename, or you can add a new scene. I'm gonna click on that, and let's go ahead and call this video overlay. I'm gonna click okay on that. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that you have scenes in OBS, and you can have as many scenes as you want, and then within a scene, you have sources. So the best way to think of it is a source is something like a image, the overlay that we're going to do, and it's going to be in this scene. Now, the nice thing is when you close OBS, it'll actually save all your scenes and everything in those scenes. So if you have, say, multiple types of calls and you have different images you use on those, you could set up different scenes for each one of those calls. So for example, let's say you're in recruiting and you do open houses, you might have one for open houses. You might have another one then for a special day or a special event, and the sources of images might be different for each one of those events, okay? So that's the kind of way to think about it. From left to right, you're moving across through all the things that you're going to need. Okay. The next thing you'll do then is add a source. So I'm going to add an image here. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go to image. The image that I want to do is the logo. Let's just call it logo. And I'm going to click OK. And then what I'm going to do is click browse. I'm going to head over to the folder where I have everything in. And I'm going to just choose the logo that I've already set up. And I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to click OK. Now I can move it around however I want. So if I wanted it up here, I could do that. Or I could just move it down here just to give it a little better look there. So again, anything that you have as a source, you can move around. Okay. Now what you're going to do is have to also add as a source your camera. Now before I do that, let me go ahead and add a couple other things here. I'm going to do a Collis logo, and that's another one that I just added just for fun. Okay, so you have both of these here. Now if you want to get rid of one, you can remove that, and now you have this Call Now button. So you can imagine if you're like in a call and you want to incentivize students to call admissions right away. Uh, the next 100 callers are going to get a waiver of the application fee and so you wanted to kind of switch this up in the call, you could actually do that from here. Okay, so I don't want to complicate things too much, so let's stick with this logo, but I just want to show you can add sources. Another source you will have to add is obviously your camera. So what I'm going to do is come here and I'm going to choose video capture device. I'm going to call this camera. Now if you have multiple cameras, you can add multiple cameras, but I'm assuming most of you do not have multiple cameras. And what you're going to do is choose the camera that you want to use, I'm gonna use my front camera, okay? I can go through and I can set up some changes here, but now you can see me in my camera. I'm gonna click okay, and now what I can do is drag this and make it bigger. Now, of course, the camera is on top of that logo now, so what I can do is just drag that down to the bottom, and now you will see that. The next thing I will want to do is to actually mute both of these, okay? Because I'm assuming you don't want to go through the complicated process of setting up a lot of different devices for your audio. You're just going to use probably your headphones or the microphone you're comfortable with. So I'm going to mute these. If you don't mute them, when you go to the feed for the Zoom call, you'll get a lot of feedback, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and click Start Virtual Camera now. If you don't click it now, that is fine. You can click it at any time. I will come back and show you how. The next thing is now we're just gonna join our Zoom call. Okay, so I've joined my call and now I can start my video. Note that it's going to give you all the cameras that you usually use with one addition and that's going to be your OBS virtual camera. So I'm gonna click on that one, start the video of course, and there we go, we have that icon. Now, just to show you what it's going to look like, this is in the OBS. Okay, so what we have here is this screen here, which is the OBS and the Zoom call, and nobody's gonna see this screen unless, of course, you're sharing your screen with everybody. All right, so super easy here, and now let's say I want to switch out this uh, logo. What I'm gonna do is just mute it, takes it away, and I wanna say, hey everybody, give us a call right now. The next 100 callers are going to get a free application. And there you go. So you can imagine the use case of this in any scenario. Of course, I'm covering the context of higher education. 
Okay, now you can stop your virtual camera. That'll kick that offline. So again, this is the Zoom call. If I wanted to, uh-oh, for some reason I lost that. I can now switch to my Surface front camera. And people will obviously see that it's not connected. So if you want to get it going, if you join a call and you see that screen, what you're going to do is go over to OBS and just hit start virtual camera. Now, I think a question might be, how do you get those images? I have, again, in that downloadable document, you can get from my website uh, you know, a process, and that process does include how I got the images that I'm using and set those up. But you know, since you've stuck around this long, if you're watching till the end of the video, let me throw that in for you. What you can do is head over to canva.com, and I have other videos on you know, using Canva and so forth. So no reason to necessarily have me go through all of those, but once you get a canva.com account, it's a freemium account, so you can get everything that I'm doing for free, create your design. What you'll want to do is a presentation, which click on presentation, it'll open up, you will go to uploads, you'll upload a logo. I've already uploaded the logos and I have them in my folder here. You can see that I've got a lot of logos saved for my department, uh, for organizations I belong to, my own branding, and so forth. And once you have the logo uploaded, you can then just drag and drop it onto the canvas. Let's just say, for example, I want this one. And I could you know, move it however I want. Then I'm gonna go to download. When I select download, I'll choose PNG, and I'm going to do a transparent background and as you can see in the folder, you know, click download, these are transparent backgrounds. So when I import them into OBS, they're all set up, you know, ready to have the uh, nothing in them. So it's not blocking the camera image. It's just all see-through except for the image. All right, so that is it. It is super easy. The good news is once you have OBS set up the first time, it's going to remember all of your settings. So let me launch it real quick and show you. You will see I have video overlay, I have all of those images still there. So this could not be any easier. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell if you wanna see future videos. I will be covering other ways in which you can up your branding game. If you are a faculty member or working in higher education, if you're in the training and development world like I am, I'm in both sectors. Uh, yeah, go ahead and, and make sure you subscribe. I'd love to have you join my community. Until I see you again, I hope you have an excellent day.